Speaking of mindset, have you or any of your sniper buddies ever taken out somebody as innocent as a chaplain and had a breakdown? Like, I just can't do this job anymore. No. I've shot someone that I felt I had to take a moment. I felt a little sad about, I guess. Yeah. And that's only because I heard his mom crying from, I was up on their rooftop and he decided to go do his thing. And first shot, I had heard ruckus going on. I heard them trying to engage this guy, but the way he was running through the the woods and the, the, the yeah, I guess you would call it the woods, equivalent to woods here in America. They have like growth of sporadic trees and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, bullets were impacting the, the tree trunks and the trees out there and he wasn't getting hit. And I had a clear line of sight. He was running directly away from me in his blue, call it a man dress. First shot, I missed. Um, just wasn't having like a good stable position. So I got down on the knee, took a breath, shot again. I squared him up right in my scope. And when I shot the second time, he just disappeared. And I was like, not weird. It just wasn't, I was expecting to see something still a little bit, but he just was gone. Um, climbed off the rooftop. The guys were going to go take pictures of the dead body with the AK. And like he didn't just disappear. He would, had a hole in his back and a big gaping hole in his, in his chest and squirting blood all over the, the little bush he was laying next to. Um, but I heard his mom crying, so I climbed off the rooftop and I sat down on this fallen like branch, a fallen log, tree log. And I sat down on that and looked at this guy call him M. And uh, I was like, damn, dude, that sucks. And he was like, oh, don't worry about it. But, and that was like, as far as the conversation went, it hurt me more than, yeah, it just hurt. That was the only one that I could say, actually, I felt something of like sadness mm -hmm. on that one. But close as I came to crying. You know, you you just said something else that, that uh, made me remember a prior conversation you and I had. Mm -hmm. You said they went and took pictures of the body. Is yeah. that like normal practice? Oh yeah. So is that the is that the way you guys can conclusively say he has thirty seven confirmed kills, thirty three, mm -hmm. one hundred and five mm -hmm. confirmed kills? Is yeah. He, uh, yeah. So you go up. You want to make sure you're not like out there just committing murder. So you want to go up, take a picture, lay out all the his AK, his ammo, his suicide vest, whatever it may be. You lay it out, take photos of it, and that way you're just like covered. But it also gets called up to, hey, my my call sign was Sierra, um, Mike Sierra and a number, Mike Sierra one EKIA one enemy killed in action, and that number gets called up and documented. You bring back the pictures and just to you know have that on your side, I guess. But there's only one time we really didn't have. There's been a few times we we couldn't take pictures just because the the speed at which we were moving and we had an objective to get to at a certain time and the other time was uh i helped call in 105 howitzer rounds from an ac-130 gunship and i think we killed i have to look at the award i think that day i killed five in the wood line uh i helped blow up five in the wood line but when we went up there to go check them it was like slipping on a butt cheek and a foot and I remember they were telling our commander was like, hey, we have to put the bodies not together, but we want to see how many bodies there were. So there's a, a half a head there. And and after a while, it just got like, oh, you can't put all this back together again. It's like Humpty Dumpty. And it was just a, a round estimate. Like, OK, this is about five guys. We knew it was around five, but. OK, so you just you just caught me off guard with something. I didn't realize you. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's one thing to be behind the barrel of that gun and take that shot. Mm -hmm. I thought there was a whole other branch of, 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 you know, the guys out there who go and they take the pictures and you never see the pictures, you mm -hmm. never see the damage mm -hmm. that you have actually caused mm -hmm. because you, in some cases you're a football field away. Yeah. You're telling me that that there are times when you personally go to see oh, yeah. the damage that you have done. Oh yeah, get the heck out yeah. of here. The hate this. I, I there was the, the one guy in the blue man dress. Um, I kept this picture. Hold on, you 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 actually have 
you no, I don't copies, have it anymore. But I'm saying oh, yeah. you get copies of the pictures too? Yeah, I printed it out. On okay, the, uh, go ahead. Yeah, at the end of our deployments, I don't know if I'll... At the end of our deployments, we, it was a... Every body who we killed was... Yeah, it was a lot. We killed, yeah, a lot. I think one deployment, my battalion had average... We killed over a thousand people in like three months. So, okay, so... so why Why would you, and I'm asking mm-hmm. you, I'm looking at you right in your face, mm-hmm. why would you even want to to keep a copy of that picture? Now, we've all seen serial killer movies or or heard about, like, right here in New York City, uh, they, they have the, the Gilgo Beach uh, mm-hmm. guy, and he they, they, they're known for keeping quote-unquote trophies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why would somebody in your position... Mm-hmm want to see the damage number one but number two even want to keep a a picture of this thing during that time in the deployment was a bad time i guess one two and i it was because i missed that one and it the distance was not necessarily so far away i think it was the angle and me rushing the shot but i wanted to see one where i hit him at what it looked like um i had never i guess seen the damage like that up close or the the I don't know, it was a pretty good exit hole from a hollow tip 308 round that I kept. I kept it for like a day and got in trouble for it and was told to, hey, you can't you can't do that. And I wasn't keeping it for like a psycho way. It was just like trying to figure out. It's like when you're uh, in sniper school or training, we have these notebooks and it's called dope books, your data of previous engagement. So when you're shooting a paper target, you can mark where my bullet hit, where this was at, and you can keep track of, you know, during this day, it was 75 degrees, the barometric pressure was 29.75, the wind was blowing from this direction at this many miles per hour, this is my altitude, all these things factor in. So when I pull the trigger, that's where the bullet went, this is where I thought it would go, but this is where it went. That way we can adjust accordingly if that situation arises again. When you're in combat, you don't necessarily have a data book or a dope book. For me, during that engagement, my dope book, my target was a, a literal uh, a guy who I just engaged with a bullet hole. I thought I squared him up right in his spine, but I hit him like over his shoulder and it popped out his chest. And you could see like the, the heart a little bit where it was pumping or pumped and squirted out like a, like a water hose of blood just yeah, sprayed on a, on a bush. 